Today in the crypto space, we see some chop action throughout the market. Bitcoin holding steady at $23,000 and Ethereum still around that $1,600 mark. The rest of the crypto space, the altcoins are pretty much going sideways. However, there are some good gainers, MakerDown, Filecoin and SDX and even Aptos, some green price action. However, in today's video, I want to look at the general crypto market. I want to talk about Bitcoin as a leading indicator and I want to talk about one project that is looking really good for a buy the dip opportunity and it's due for an update and that project is called Hedera Hashgraph. So you know what? Let's talk about the news. Let's analyze the charts and let's strategize to capitalize. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and let's get right into it guys We see that the market is going sideways and this could be an opportunity to buy the dip or maybe take some profits Guys on the channel. We talk about crypto We look for the opportunities throughout the entire market whether we go up or down bearish or bullish We want to make sure that we are one step ahead of the market Buying the dips and selling the highs is the way you capitalize on that volatility And if you appreciate that strategy do yourself a favor and subscribe to the channel Click the bell button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and of course you can follow me on all those socials and even better join me live 7 30 eastern six evenings a week we talk about crypto news and price action so what can we see in this general market let's begin bitcoin still chopping away going sideways guys i was very hesitant very hesitant considering the fact that the both the four hour time frame and the daily time frame were in the middle of the range on the rsi right in the middle smack in the middle and is that is usually the area where we get indecision indecision price action means choppy choppy price action and very very difficult to trade liquidations stop losses trading fees all of the uh, all of the above basically ruin a crypto trader's life at this point so i don't want to get into involved in that i'd rather wait on the sidelines wait for good signals for good rallies good pumps or even dumps and in that case we are ready to pounce ethereum at the top of the range very much so very similar to bitcoin type of thing but bitcoin just in the last little while took a little bit of a dip and of course this morning it looked a little bit bullish and uh, and this is the thing that i'm expecting this chop action in the middle of the range bnb same thing going sideways xrp going sideways many of these altcoins are still in that consolidation or sideways price action there are a couple good gainers like litecoin getting a nice little pump tron at the top of the range looking a little bullish if it breaks out maybe we can get another pump to the upside very possible ton coin still looking good however getting a little bit of a retracement on lower time frames down approximately two and a half percent um we have filecoin getting a little bit of a rally but it has been down approximately three and a half percent in the last seven days and filecoin has dipped quite a bit has pulled back quite a bit and an eight percent relief rally to tell you the honest truth is not much considering that it dipped significantly already however if Bitcoin continues to show weakness and to show that the fact is that the bearish divergence is still in play, guys, I'm expecting a continuation to the downside. We're going to look at the Bitcoin chart very soon. And of course, we're going to talk about um, Hedera Hashgraph. First, we're going to look at the general market. Then we're going to look at Bitcoin and as a leading indicator. Bitcoin tends to tell us what to expect from a broad perspective, because if Bitcoin comes down, you expect all coins to come down. If Bitcoin rallies, all coins will rally. So we try to use Bitcoin as a leading indicator. And of course, the volatility is definitely more in, in altcoins. We see a lot more volatility and much more opportunities to make gains in altcoins. So that's why we kind of combine both analysis here on the channel. And of course, guys, if you have any other projects that you want me to cover here on the channel, let me know in the comment section below, or you can hit me up on those socials. Even better, join me live and you can request them um, as we speak. Okay, let's continue down here. Aptos getting a little bit of a pump up approximately 7% that is pretty good that is looking good as a nice relief but aptos in general has retraced significantly already so a little relief of six percent is is decent but in the grand scheme of things aptos already dipped like i think around 30 percent or so okay so um, i think we're due for an aptos update um this evening we're, we'll take a look v chain i'm interested in v chain i want to take a look at v chain chronos cro bottom of the range near protocol bottom bottom of the range and of course the token for day for today h bar hedera hashgraph still bleeding out looking a little bit weak but we are getting to critical areas of support this is the good thing in the short short term we can get into a quick 
scenario. We can get into a quick rally to the upside, or we can eventually break down so, uh, below these critical levels of support. So this is why I am coming to you with a video today on Herdera Her Hashgraph, because it does look like we could potentially get some volatility in the short term and eventually fulfill our long-term analysis on the daily, which would be a continuation to the downside. So we'll get into it very shortly. Let's continue looking down. Algorand still at the bottom of the range, Quant at the bottom of the range, many of these projects. Stacks is still looking bullish, but this bearish divergence maybe could come into play very, very soon. And then we'll see those retracements. The narrative behind Stacks is definitely very interesting. Um, the layer two solution to Bitcoin offering smart contracts to Bitcoin is something that could be you know, lucrative going forward, considering that, you know, uh, um, uh, Gary Gensler, the, the administration want to deem every other project other than Bitcoin as a security. And that is, you know, somewhere where stacks could kind of circumvent some of that regulation or some of the spotlight. Phantom looking good at the bottom of the range, looking for buying the dip, but look at EOS getting that rally, getting that pump to the upside. However, still potentially looking for a rejection at previous highs. Okay, so the market's looking pretty good. In general, we have some good gainers, synthetics, uh, we have good uh, Frax up, KuCoin looking healthy, MakerDAO looking he healthy. Uh, what else do we got here? What else do we got here? Gate going sideways. But generally speaking, the market is going sideways. These AI tokens are still doing well, up approximately 5%, 4% the last 24 hours. But I still feel that bearish divergence will still come into play. This high that we're at right now, this pump that Singularity got, is not as strong as the previous and you can see that the momentum oscillator is looking a little bit weak in comparison guys i'm not starting uh, trying to spread fud on singularity but uh, for me from an, a, a, a trading perspective this is not the time to meet for me to get in i'm waiting for significant pullbacks especially on such pumped tokens with tons of fomo and tons of you know hype the, the the dumps could be really strong at the same time the pumps could be really strong i just don't feel the risk to reward ratio to be absolutely healthy for some of these AI tokens. GMX, I'm looking for an opportunity. Bicket, also looking for an opportunity. Once this thing pulls back, I'm going to start scaling into Bicket. I believe that it's going to have some good, good traction in the next bull run. And yeah, so far, nice momentum to the upside, approximately 9% um, in the last seven days pretty good pretty healthy optimism still in that slumpy look it kind of looks slumpy it looks like it's trying to break down if it breaks down below these previous lows that you see here on the small little chart we could get an, a leg down in the immediate short term and be prepared to buy those dips right so we got some good options for buying the dip some good um you know speculative opportunities that we can potentially take advantage of and that's what we do here guys we scrape through the market and look for opportunities look at dydx i'm so bullish on dydx and it rallied pretty good in the last 24 hours up approximately six percent so not bad not bad it's conflux up 16 percent, but definitely still looking a little lump dumpy considering that we came down 29 percent could we, this just be a little bit of a relief rally in between a bigger perspective, you know, uh, pullback, right? So, of course, it depends on the time frame. I'm absolutely bullish on larger time frames, meaning weekly time frame. We got that bullish divergence on the weekly bottom of the range. Nice rally to the upside. I totally scaled in on that divergence on the weekly. However, the daily, we can see that we already kind of made a good move. And a lot of the oscillators are showing us that, that we're at the top of the range. We came from the top of the range on the momentum oscillators on the daily. And we're looking for that reset, which we didn't completely reset. Okay, guys, I know you're here to talk about charts. So let's get right into it. What is Bitcoin saying? Bitcoin, as we speak, is still chopping away, going sideways. Earlier on today, we looked at this price action and it looked really bullish a lot of people were coming out a lot of the bulls were coming out of the woodworks talking about bullish momentum to the upside and i believe that we will get that but i'm not confident just yet i turn from a bull to a bear a bull to a bear depending on what i see in the price action as a trader it's important that you change lenses and change perspective based on the data that is presented to you personally speaking at the moment on the four hour it doesn't look bad but we are still ranging within the mid range of the r side this is 
is chop action territory. Stay away. My potent, my advice, obviously not financial advice, but my advice as a trader is when you see the momentum in the middle of the range here, this is the time where you see a lot of volatility and a lot of sideways action. And at the end of the day, this is where I want to be risk off completely. But if we get into higher time frames, it tells a little bit of a, a different picture. It's see, you can see that the bearish divergence is still in play. And the question is, what could we expect in the upcoming days? Okay, so let's look at Bitcoin from a bigger perspective here. We do see um, a potential continuation to the downside. Now, there is an upward sloping channel here. Now, the channel is uh, drawn a little loosely. We can tighten it up just a bit. Okay, to touch a little bit more of this price action at the bottom, fine. That's as comfortable I'm going to uh, go because at the end of the day, we have this 200 EMA right here creeping. We have the price action, which is the, the wicks that kind of went down to this level. We got to respect that. The fact that we are going to respect this price action means that we need to respect the fact that this price action where we are right now could come and tag in this trend line once again. The trend line is only one touch really right now. We try to there's only one touch this is doesn't even justify a trend line at the current moment the only thing that i can say is that we have a scenario where we're losing a little bit of that momentum if this was a strong pump to the upside we would have definitely touched this trend or at least get a little bit higher and we got a rejection we got a, a clear rejection at previous highs and we created a higher high with the bearish divergence on the rsi creating lower highs on the rsi we're getting some follow-through price action that we're looking out for clearly looking looking out for if we create a shoulder here or some sort of price action that creates a, a lower high guys that would be some follow-through price action that would just basically confirm the fact that we are looking for lower levels right so so far so good we're holding steady nothing to worry about other than the fact that if we break below, um, I would say 22,630 or so, um, yeah, it looks like we're going to snap to about 21,900 and then lower targets. Here we come. The neckline of this potential consolidation or the in, um, the break of structure of this consolidation period is below that 200 daily bounce that we got here at 21,500. And then it doesn't look great. Look at the EMAs on the uh, MACD still facing down. Yes, we got a pale green, uh, red histogram bar, which is, you know, coming down. It, it, it's still in the bearish control zone re regarding the MACD histogram bars, but the EMAs are still also still fo uh, folding down. And that just kind of shows us that maybe the price action or the momentum is trying to get into the bearish control zone. Okay, so this is anticipated on the daily. I'm looking for a full reset on the daily, and then I'll start to get bullish again. The four hour, on the other hand, we could come down for another test at lower levels, and we could get a bullish divergence. It's very possible, right? We didn't even completely reset on the four hour, guys. That's that's for me is looking a little bit like let's hold on for a second. We look at that. We didn't even get into the extreme levels of the RSI. So I'm not going to get totally bullish for a reversal here. The only thing that I can say is that the reason why we got support here on this RSI is because the price action got support off the 200. And we know that the 200 is a very strong area for a support or resistance. And that's what we got to take this as. This could be a little bit of a bounce before we test this trend line. And then we test real areas of support, which based on the supply and demand price action wise, we have a lot of bottoms down here that will act as support at 22,650. This support, honestly, we could get it. We could rally higher, but I'm not totally convinced, particularly, particularly with the fact that look at the volume profile. We got a lot of chop action there, a lot of chop that could act as support or resistance in this case to a continuation to the upside. So before I actually, actually go super bullish, I want to make sure that we clear all this chop action. I would be looking at maybe about $23,000 or $24,000 at minimum before I would consider maybe opening up a small position to potentially get up to about $24,500. And then, of course, this top here will be the next area of resistance. We have a lot of resistance, a lot of work to get through before we continue upwards. Whereas if you look down, we got clear gaps, a lot more of a gap here happening. And we got a lot more of a gap here down here that looks a, like a great opportunity to come down. Okay, guys, so, so far, so good. I'm waiting for the daily to reset. Again, just as a recap, the daily to reset and come down to the extreme level of the RSI 
before I go bullish on the four hour. It looks like we're in still in that chop zone not really coming from the extreme levels we didn't hit extre extremities since this rally so I'm, I'm i'm holding steady i'm waiting for extreme conditions before i can expect extreme volatility and that's the way you get, get make gains guys is looking for extreme conditions for extreme volatility all right guys let's talk about h bar it's been a while it's been a while since we talked about h uh, h bar h bar has a great community great fundamentals dell's on board microsoft is on board whether you like it or not those guys are heavyweights in the tech space and i'm expecting them to bring liquidity to the project regardless of your opinions um, about these um, institutions or businesses that are involved they bring liquidity to any market or any project that they look what they did with uh chat gbt uh, meaning microsoft 10 billion dollars that's liquidity right there so we got to anticipate that the backing is definitely there for their their hashgraph and in fact uh, their hashgraph community is so strong and so enthusiastic about the project that it's almost like a fundamental it's a pumpamental it's a it will definitely pump the price the fact that the community strong helps with the um the price action definitely okay so we broke down through this trend uh, we anticipated the bearish divergence here based on the momentum. Higher highs on the price action, higher lo lower highs on the RSI. And this is on the four hour, four hour, okay? So this is important to identify. Now, let's quickly get into the daily to see if there's anything to uh, be aware of. You can see that on the daily, we are trying to reset this RSI. I'm almost getting into a bullish stance regarding the, regarding their hash graph, ready to deploy capital. And you're going to see me turn into a bull real quick as soon as I see the daily show some support, okay? Okay. Now, one thing that I want to address, and I'm going to kind of clean this TA up here with you guys, because it's been about two weeks since we talked about Hedera Hashgraph, I think. Let's look at this. When was the last time we talked about HBAR? Yeah, about two weeks. Two weeks ago, uh, we talked about it, and I think we're due for an update. But we can see that the volume gap down here that we identified is still there right and this would be a deep retracement a nice retracement opportunity to buy dips okay and then we have another scenario um that i would like to pay attention to and excluding previous price action i just want you to be aware that there's a fat gap right here right excluding this price action right here just uh, regarding this pump and we have to hold um this price action more accountable meaning set higher precedence over it because it's the most recent and technically speaking a lot of this price action scrubs out the supply and demand of previous price action okay because we got a lot of traders that got in in this scenario liquidated stop lost profit taking and so on that no longer have a, as much how can i say influence over the supply and demand or support and resistance areas in the current price action so we kind of have to take it with a grain of salt but this would be both price action both previous and the current price action down here has a huge gap huge scenario huge opportunity now if we exclude it and we use just this we can see that we have an opportunity as well, a bigger opportunity, okay? But look at the common factor. The common factor is still this zone right here between five cents and, and a bit to about, uh, sorry, 4.9 uh, 4 cents to about 5.7 cents, which is, that is the common factor gap that we have here that we can fly right below and get a nice 13% fire sale just from this little dip, right? But you can see based on the current scenario, H bar is fighting this point of control just with this price action. The point of control is confluent with the 200 daily EMA that this orange line, it's trying to stay above. It's getting rejected. It is looking a little weak. However, guys, if we stay above and sometimes we do stay above this zone and we get a little bit of a pop to the upside, it's looking good. Okay. In fact, this is not a buy a bad buy the dip opportunity. To be honest, it's a good scenario. The reason being, we could definitely get a little pop to the upside based on the four hour time frame. Okay, so this is the daily. Daily perspective, I'm still expecting a con continuation to the downside. The MACD is looking really bearish. Let's take a look. Look at that. Coming down, red histogram bars, EMAs are facing down like crazy, right? Um, that's a little bit of a warning 
to, to be honest, when things are so strong, when the price action is so strong in one direction, you start to feel like, okay, take it easy. We need a relief. We need some relief, right? So here we are coming down. The uh, RSI is coming down. The MACD is coming down. We're looking for a support. Now, point of control here at six, seven cents or so. We can see this red line. That's the point of control. Um, Previous price action, huge amount, the 200 daily, it fell below. Could we get back above? Possible. But more or less, this is the zone that I'm looking out for. So now let's go into the four hour. You can see that the four hours showing us a short term potential bounce. Okay. Maybe a relief rally, maybe a dead cat bounce, whatever the case is, the momentum oscillator is showing me a little bit of hope that we could get some relief. Now, let's be careful here because if we snap below this green arrow or this yellow line right here, okay, I'm, I'm expecting to buy the dip because at the end of the day, this is not a bad retracement. And based on the four hour, we can see that we could potentially get some relief. But if we break below the next areas where you should have some capital ready to buy the dip even heavier, which is these other green arrow scenarios, right? I'm going to kind of... Um, move them over a bit because i put these in two weeks ago and they still hold validity they're still valid price targets okay but let's look at the momentum oscillators for a second what's happening here okay it looks like a beautiful pivot point in the extreme levels of the rsi of over sold territory that's when you start to pay attention to price action and critical levels of support we identified this area as support already on even higher time frames and you can see even on the four hour the gap begins right about here okay based on these this green arrow now is there bullish divergence the question is is this a pivot point where we can see that the momentum is kind of shifting in the opposite direction okay so let's take a look here we see that the MACD or the RSI is coming down at this point, but then we slowly start to move upwards. What's happening in the price action? Completely coming down up until today's price action. And if you include these two bottoms, one here and one here, look at the RSI. It's pivoting. It's going in the opposite direction. That's class A bullish divergence on the four hour. Let's get in the, in the hourly. I barely go in the hourly, but sometimes it's nice to get some of that confirmation because you get more detail in the price, in the price action. Right now, this would be a follow through shoulder, meaning a confirmation low, a higher low in this pivot point, meaning that this is not a bad time to go long. I know what you're thinking, guys. You're talking, Mike, you're always, you're bearish. Lately, you've been bearish. You're looking for lower targets. I am. In the grand scheme of things, on the daily perspective, I still feel like we have some more downward pressure. But right now, it's time to look at the four hour and look at the potential bullish scenario or the potential bullish setup on H bar that you can get here. You can get into a nice trading scenario. Okay. So, uh, even with leverage, if you're okay with leverage, make sure you set those stop losses. But for leverage, I would like to see some M patterns here, some sort of a W, some sort of inverse head and shoulders, something, but we might not get it. And the reason being is this divergence is getting its follow through act price action right here. As long as we do not create a lower low on the RSI, let me kind of show you my invalidation. As long as the RSI doesn't create a lower low, meaning it doesn't come down here, and just continue coming down and make a lower low, then we're good. Then the potential of continuation to the upside is definitely there. And as long as the um, price action doesn't follow and could create another lower low and just keep on coming down. So far, the bullish divergence on the lower time frames is intact with the follow through price action that we need to hold. And where do we need to hold? Uh, let's get some trade setup going here. Regardless, we need to protect capital. I'm looking at on the four hour that we could potentially hit this resistance level, okay, at about uh, seven and a half cents. But look at your stop loss. I wouldn't put it lower, uh, right around, I would put it right about there. Give it a little bit more, even 2%, no big deal, right? 2%, sure, right around there. Give you a four to one ratio, which is healthy. 2%, four to one, sure. Now you can see, what happens here, based on the supply and demand, based on what's happening, we could get a little bit of a bounce. But mind you, I just want you to be aware, look at this chop, okay? It's going to be a bit of a struggle, but look at the chop. Let's get in the daily quick. Is there any any resistance? There's a lot of resistance, but nonetheless, it's chop. We could get a nice little slow bleed to the upside as a retracement. We know that retracements are usually choppy 
they're, they're ABC corrections to the upside. We could get those ABC moves, those quick uh, little chop, choppy moves to the upside, and then finally get another leg down that is a lot more smoother than, or, than, than a retracement. So what I'm trying to say here is this. Let's kind of rearrange. Uh, let's get my pen marks out. What we could do is get some, a bounce here, chop up, chop up, chop up, and then finally continue and continue coming down. If we break this neckline, guys, or this, this zone of support, we are coming down to hit those other price targets, fulfilling the analysis on this daily where we are looking for a reset on the RSI. So short-term bullish, perhaps a good uh, trade uh, setup. This wick right here is good. I like this morning star. It's looking really good. It's an indication of a pivot point to the upside, to be honest. Look at this one right pivot point to the upside and the continuation right when we get those right here look at right here another one pivot point to the upside could we get that little pivot point retracement and then continuation to the downside a good level of uh resistance is also right here at about 7.8 cents but i would i would take profits guys early i wouldn't leave them here i would take profits start scaling out four to one ratio start scaling out taking profits early because at the end of the day the daily is showing us that the momentum is still coming down right so another indicator for taking profits is wait for the four hour rsi to reset okay let this rsi get to the extreme conditions again even more so if you want to be safe let's see where the day, where the hourly goes i don't trade the hourly but sometimes i use it for exit you know, just look to just to be safe that I get out at right times, wait for the hourly to get extreme levels and then try to focus on the four hour. When the four hours gets to uh, extreme levels, start taking profits bit by bit, trailing up those stop losses. And hopefully you can get some good gains percentage wise. What is that? Potentially. 10%. That's not bad of a trade with a little bit of leverage with risk management. It's not a bad scenario. Just mind you, Bitcoin right now is consolidating in the middle of the range. If we get a little bit of relief, we could see Hedera Hashgraph get some relief as well. Bitcoin on the daily is still looking for that downwards momentum. So is HBAR, so are many of these alts. But we can get short-term pumps to the upside in the meantime, satisfying the ebb and flows of the market that we usually get and that we try to ride here on the channel. Guys, if you appreciated the analysis this afternoon, do the channel a huge favor. Slap that like button because as a new channel the support is greatly appreciated and of course guys you can follow me on all those socials but more importantly subscribe to the channel click the bell button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos guys i try to release a video every time i see something interesting in the charts and of course today's all about h bar if you have any other projects that you want me to cover let me know in the comment section below or you can join me live at 7 30 eastern where we talk about crypto news and price action take care guys have a good one and don't forget to buy the dip